Hi guys, a little different video than usual today. Um, so what I'm working on today is I'm going to be making a, um, like an AV rack for my office. So a place that like PlayStation, Xbox, amplifier, receiver, you know, something like that can go on. Um, so I'm going to make a, uh, a four level shelf with threaded um, rods for legs. I'll show you like an example here. So to start off, I ordered four of these. Um, these are actually uh, butcher block cutting boards. They came from a Webstaurant store. So I'll post a link here in the description, not affiliated, but that's where I got them from. Um, they are 24 by 18 and they're an inch and a quarter thick. They make them in a couple different variations or sizes, um, but that's the one that I thought would be good for me. Um, so when you're uh, using like a network rack or a normal audio cabinet, um, 19 inches is kind of like the standard equipment width, the maximum width that most manufacturers allow for being mounted in like a, like a server style or network style rack. Um, so being that it's 24, I'm going to end up with, um, you know, kind of this amount usable, which is like 21 inches usable. Um, so to start off, um, I, I got four of these, so I'm going to have a four level shelf and I drilled all of them, um, starting an inch and a half away from each edge using this uh, framing square. I just marked an inch and a half, made a cross and drilled through. Um, I started off small, but I went all the way up to, uh, this is a three quarter inch twist bit. Um, I'm going to be using three quarter inch threaded rod for them. So I drilled those here on the table. Um, I picked this thing up, which is pretty cool. I don't have a drill press, but this is like a, a tool that allows you to make like a right angle or a, like a, a 90 degree uh, hole. Um, it's not exact. My holes aren't exact because the drill bits are big and I had to go bigger than half inch. Um, but it's pretty close, honestly. So that worked out really well. Uh, I, I ended up using um, this drill bit set. I started off with an eighth inch, went to a quarter, then a half, or sorry, eighth, three eighths, half. And then I went up to three quarter from there um, with this guy. Um, this bit's an Irwin, worked really well. Um, these are all Milwaukee's. I like these bits a lot. They worked really well as well. And um, I use my 18 volt hammer drill, my Milwaukee hammer drill for that. Um, so now what I'm doing is I'm sanding these down to get them to the point that I can stain them. Um, so these are a rubber wood. They have a, like a coating on them. It's more like a clear satin finish kind of. Um, so I'm, I'm working on sanding these down. So here's the last one. Um, I have the Milwaukee, this is the M18 random orbit sander. Um, I have the corded random, random orbit sander too, but I actually just picked up the cordless. I'm going to get rid of the corded. Um, this thing works really, really well. I just... I like when I'm building stuff, I try to buy a new tool every time. Um, I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper to just kind of remove the coating and then I'm going over it with a 320 when I'm done um, just to make the finish nice and smooth. And then we're going to um, apply a stain on top of it. I've got this connected to my Milwaukee vacuum, the, uh, the dual M18 vacuum here. I'm just kind of running it on mode one and it's really sucking up all of the dust. I, this is my fourth one. I'm almost done with it already. And, you can see there really isn't much of a mess around me. So I chose these um, because they were like the best price option to make this work with the thickness of wood that I wanted. Um, when you're looking at like solid woods, hard woods, those types of things, um, to get the width and the, the thickness that I wanted was pretty expensive. Um, these cutting boards were like 45 bucks a piece. So I ordered four of them, that's 180 bucks. Um, and I spent about $50 on fasteners, the, uh, the threaded rods and the washers and nuts and, you know, different things like that. Um, I spent another, we'll say $30, $40 on uh, stain and polyurethane and, you know, materials like that. But honestly, um, you know, I'm going to end up with exactly what I want, which is kind of cool. 
and it's actually a less expensive option than purchasing a lot of these from different companies to get something that wasn't exactly what I wanted also. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, this is a uh, pre-stain wood conditioner, which was recommended because of the rubber wood product that I'm working with here. Um, so I've got like a foam brush. Um, I'm just gonna apply this um, in the direction of the grain. I've never worked with a, a pre-stain before, but it looks pretty easy to use. So we're just gonna go over this. All right, so now I'm staining it. Um, I gave the conditioner like half an hour to dry. Um, you're supposed to stain within two hours. So this, everything has one coat, um, but I'm, I'm only doing one side and the three or four edges. I'm not doing the back side. I'll do that tomorrow after this is all dried. Um, I'm using Minwax to penetrating stain. Um, the color that I chose is called Special Walnut. Um, I think it's gonna go well with my uplift desk and some of the other things that I'm getting for my office. This is all furniture for my office. I'm not moving into it for a little while, but it gives me something to do while I wait. Um, building this, I'm gonna work on a couple different things. I have to pull network cables in the walls for a computer and stuff. So I'll do that at some point. I ordered DMF lights for the office. Um, I also ordered some sound deadening tiles, so we'll talk about all that as time goes on and I progress through it. Um, this is coat number two. I'm just kind of letting it soak in and dry. And then uh, I will probably do a third coat on everything. And then we'll let everything dry overnight. Um, there are stains that have, I, I have a separate polyurethane that I'm going to do over the top of this. There are stains that have polyurethane in them. Um, I like to do the stains without polyurethane in them because you can add more stain to make it darker or to allow it to seep in a little bit better if you need, um, more uniform color. And also the, uh, the polyurethane, you can do kind of as many coats as you want to of that when it's just poly. Um, so you can end up with like a really thick coating, which can provide some protection. So I'll probably do a couple coatings of polyurethane. So the idea here is, uh, you know, this is my, my second coat, I'm gonna hit all four of these with a second coat. This is the first one that I'm doing the second time. And then um, I'll go over them a third time. You see like the grain is already starting to dry, but these other parts are kind of glossy. They don't take long to dry. So I'll just go through one, one by one by one by one, get all of them done. Then I'll do a third coat. Then I'll let them all dry overnight. And I'm just kind of sticking them on like boxes. So they're up off the ground. And you just wanna be careful like that you don't end up with drips you can sand it if you have to at the end to, well, not at the end, but in between things. But you don't want to sand if you can avoid it because the sanding dust is going to get stuck in your stain and it's not great. It'll look ugly. So there we go. This guy's done just like that. So I'm just going to kind of keep going through and uh, get them all done and then we'll go on to the next step. All right. So now I'm doing polyurethane. So for this, I'm using a Minwax oil-based fast-drying polyurethane. It is a um, satin finish. So this is available in like matte and satin and a couple others. This is called warm satin. Um, so at this point, it's been three days that I've been working on this. So I did um, the stain, three coats on both sides. And then um, after the stain uh, was allowed to dry, I started doing the polyurethane. Um, I did 
three, no, four coats of polyurethane on the other side of all of these. Um, so do a coat like this, let it dry. With the weather being kind of wet right now, it's taking about six hours to dry. Um, so that means I'm only really doing like two coats a day. Um, I guess I could probably fit in three if I start first thing in the morning and do the last one right before bed. But uh, yeah, so you just kind of flatten it all out like this, go over it with the brush. Um, I'm just using these like cheap foam brushes and pretty much I'm using one of these for a day and then just throwing it away when I'm done. Uh, brushes are like $1.50. Um, so once the coat dries, you want to sand it with a, like a high grit sandpaper or, or high, um, um, like a 320 is, is what I've been using. Um, so I'm just kind of dumping a little puddle out and then just using this to kind of spread it out, uh, mostly because these big foam brushes don't fit in the can very well. I could use a smaller one, but it'll take longer then. And then just being careful to not get it all over the floor. Burp. All right, so here is the finished product. Uh, so this overall is uh, just under 36 inches high. 36 would be to the top of this. I did four shelves. Uh, my bottom space is 10 inches and this is like nine and then eight or something thereabouts. And there's like three inches at the bottom. Um, and obviously the thickness of the shelves takes up uh, inch and a quarter times four. So five inches are gone. Um, so I got these rubber feet from Amazon. Um, they're actually for the bottom of a cane. Um, so they sit on that and, uh, they're three quarter inch, um, hole in them. So you just stick the threaded rod right in it. Uh, you can see that there. So I purposefully left myself enough space here that I could fit, um, like a power strip on its side underneath. So my power cords will be actually underneath it. And then on these three shelves, I'll have, um, well, there's technically four shelves. I put stuff on top. Um, I'll have an amplifier. I'll have an Xbox, a PlayStation, and a Nintendo Switch. Um, so the amplifier, I'm probably going to use my shit Vidar um, and a maybe a shit Saga as the preamp. But we'll get that all straightened out um, once we get the room together. And then I ordered a pair of Kanto 28-inch stands. So they'll be on both sides of it, um, you know, here and here and uh, they will have a pair of Project Speaker Box 5s on it. So those are like 12 or 13 inches tall. So uh, the speakers will be slightly higher than the stand is, but not by much. Um, so if I put something that's like four inches tall or so on top of the stand, that'll match the top of the speakers 
and work out well for me to put my TV on top. So, as you can see, I, uh, I attach the shelves by using um, the threaded rods with uh, nuts and washers. Um, the threaded rods are three quarter of an inch. Uh, the nuts and washers are of course three quarter of an inch too. Um, one thing that's really nice about them is you have an infinite adjustability. So I can make the shelves higher or lower as I see fit. Um, and then basically what I did was I just found a level surface. I stood it up on the level surface and I got my bottom plate level. And then I just went up to my next shelf, measured in between, figured out a number that I thought was good, and then got my second shelf level, my third shelf level, and then all the way to the top, the fourth shelf level. Um, so it worked out really well. Um, you can see that my, my legs are pretty straight, um, and the top, the amount of thread that you see is pretty low. And the thread has kind of like a nice, it's almost like a beveled edge on it. So it's not really, um, you know, it's not sharp or rough. Um, so I think it came out good. You can see the wood here. And then uh, on the sides, there are these handles because the cutting boards kind of had those in it. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, it gives you the ability to kind of pick it up and slide it around. Um, and then for uh, cable management, I'm going to run a um, like a black piece of loom down the back center and just um, attach it to the back of the shelf um, with like a, I have these things, they're like a cable tie that have two slots on them that a zip tie is supposed to go through. So I'll just put those, one on each shelf, um, and then as I go down, I'll uh, put everything in the loom and then just zip tie. So I'll have one loom right down the center for everything. So that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. I know it's different. Um, leave a comment below if you liked it or want to see more like it or, you know, hated it, that too. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Have a great day.